we're about to see a model lesson from the deep dive workshop. As a reminder, the intent of this model lesson is to really give teachers space to see and feel what lessons can look like in their own classrooms. That's why we do a role play activity. Instead of having folks stay in their teacher role, we ask them to be in the learner role. And the lesson you're about to see is really gonna leverage the pair programming feature. So look out for that. All right, everybody, before we get into the curriculum and start actually doing a lesson as learners, we're going to take ourselves into the position of your students by looking at a few student profiles. So you see here we have five student profiles, five descriptions of students. I'm going to give you a moment to read these. And as you read, I want you to reflect on whether or not you see any of your own students in these profiles. And further, I'd like you to think about what your role and responsibility is as a teacher in supporting these student needs. Take a few minutes to read and reflect, and then we'll come back together. I definitely see student number four in my classroom. Uh, we focus a lot on collaboration, and so it's nice having students who are always eager to work with other, uh, work with other students and support them in their learning. Yeah, I think the challenge, though, is when you have those students who just want to blurt out the answer to everyone because they're so proud that they know it and they want to share their knowledge. It's, Absolutely. Pacing them when you have other students who are still trying to work through things is definitely a challenge. Absolutely. So in the past couple of years of teaching this course, I certainly have seen a lot of student number threes in my classrooms. Um, they're certainly very engaged early on, but as the lessons progress, get a little bit more difficult. They um, get, a lot, get really discouraged and aren't as persistent as I'd like them to be. And they work through all of the hints that are provided in each puzzle. But after they run out of hints, then they give up entirely. I'm trying to get past that. I see student number one a lot. We have a really big disparity in my class. Some kids are doing a ton of this at home and then they come in and they already know everything and they really are excited to share, but then they get ahead of everyone else and they can sometimes get bored when I'm trying to pace it appropriately mm -hmm. for the rest of the kids. And it makes the kids who aren't doing at home, who maybe don't have, even have access to computers at home, makes them feel behind. Mm -hmm. And then it's it creates a, a bad dynamic in the class. So I'm still figuring out how to deal with like engaging those students who are really ahead and excited because I don't want them to feel like they're doing something wrong, but also making sure that they're not kind of like taking all my attention. For sure. That was a really great discussion about the students that you're seeing in your classroom and how that relates to the support that we need to provide as teachers. I want you to keep those profiles in your mind and think about how you can channel the needs of those students as we move into our model lesson. So. This is a role playing activity where I am going to be acting as the teacher and you are going to be acting as learners. You are putting on what we call your learner hat. I'm gonna put on my teacher hat and you're gonna notice that I sort of slip into a mode of talking to you like you're my students. It's not because I don't respect you. It's because we're doing a role play activity where you are going to act as learners in a classroom. Any questions about that? Okay, great. Let me give you some context for the lesson that we're about to do. This lesson falls in course D, that's meant for third grade students. And it's pretty far into the course. It's uh, lesson number 12. It introduces the concepts of while loops and it uses the farmer. In this lesson, we are going to be working with one another. So you are going to need one computer per two people. I'm gonna give you a moment to get that together. And when you see my next slide, we are all going to be in our role, each of you as learners and me as a teacher. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to technology class. Last time you were here, we used a new block in Code Studio. Can you raise your hand for me if you remember using this block? All right, a couple of you remember, a couple of you don't, that's totally okay. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. Who can tell me in your own words what this, what this pink block does in Code Studio? Raise your hands, please, remember. Yeah, right here. It helps you do something a bunch of times. Yeah, so it helps you do something multiple times. So this block, you might remember, we called this a repeat block. And repeat means we're doing something more than once. And who remembers where the question marks are right now? What can we put in there? Numbers, right? Yeah, we can put numbers in here. So we use this block when we want to do something a certain number of times. Make sense? Yep. All right. 
Today, we are going to start off using that block again, and we're going to build to the next kind of block that lets us repeat. In order to do our task, we're going to be working on two of our computational practices. The first one we're gonna work on is creativity, coming up with unique solutions, all of your own. And the second is collaboration. So that's working with another person to solve problems. That's what computational practices we'll be using today. In order to do these tasks, we're going to pair program. How many of you remember pair programming? Most of you, awesome, awesome. Just a quick recap because you've been away from technology class for a little bit. When we pair program, we each take a role and we take turns in our role. So someone is the driver, that means somebody is using the keyboard and mouse. And someone is the navigator, so that's the person who's keeping track of everything we're doing and giving instructions to the person in the driver's seat. Today, we're gonna switch roles every two minutes. And I've got a timer up here that's gonna go off when it's time to switch. Does that sound good? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I need one computer per two people. I know you grabbed them from the laptop cart on your way in. So open up your computer, one per two people. Go to code.org, the website. And in the top right corner where you see your name, I want you to click and then select pair programming. Once you're there, you're gonna pick my class and then choose your partner, whoever you're working with. Pick their name from the list. Can you give me a big thumbs up when you're connected to your partner? Awesome, okay. Your task for right now is to go to course D, that's the course on the code.org website that we've been working through. Today we're on lesson 12, and you are going to get started by practicing with the first three bubbles. All I want you to do is the first three bubbles, and you're gonna take turns pair programming. Go ahead and get started. So we need to use the repeat block to take advantage of just one. But not block. five, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, only four. If it's okay. one, two, three, Once we're there at the repeat at block. At the end? Yeah. Okay, dirt pile. And then call <laughs> turn move. Do this. Bring this repeat out. <laughs> All right. Change it to two. Bring another repeat out. Six shovel holes and fill. So change it to ten. Okay, so first we have to move to the key. Yes. Oh, move. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Shall we run it? Okay. Excellent. Awesome job, everybody, with the first three bubbles here in this lesson. I want to take a minute and recap what you just did. In these activities, you always knew how much dirt you needed to move. How did you know how much dirt needed to be moved? Yeah, it showed you the number, right? You were either taking away or adding a known amount of dirt every time. I have a question for everybody. What would you need to be able to do in order to do the same exercise if you didn't know how much dirt needed to move? How would you solve that problem? Could you use a repeat block? Until it's yeah, so that's a super different way of using it, right? Up to now, when we use the repeat block, we've done it a certain number of times. But instead of saying, dig 10 times, we wanna say, shovel until there isn't any dirt left, right? Dig until it's done. So this is introducing a new type of loop, a new block. We're gonna watch this video to learn more about how this block works and then you're going to get back on your computer and you're going to use it for yourself. All right, now that we know more about how while loops work, you're gonna go back on your computer, still with your partner, you're going to pair program to use this block. Sound good? Awesome job today, everybody. Mrs. Smith is here now, so you're gonna head back to her class, but I'll see you back here next week where we're gonna keep going with while loops. All right, everybody, hats are off. Time to talk pair programming. Show of hands, how many of you have used pair programming, the tool, in your classroom with your students? 
All right, a couple, but not everybody. We're going to take some time right now to look at how pair programming shakes out in your teacher dashboard. So you're going to notice on the screen here that when we pair program, the icon changes just from like a single person or number to this like cluster of students. This is how I, as the teacher, know that students completed this level with the pair programming feature turned on. I want you to take a moment now to go to your computers. If you weren't programming uh, on your machine, open your machine up as well. And I want you to look at how your dashboard looks now that you've completed this lesson with a partner via pair programming. We're going to take a couple of minutes to do that and then come back and talk questions. So that was the model lesson from the deep dive workshop. We hope that seeing that gives you some context for how it actually looks to model a lesson uh, and to, to talk to teachers as though they're students in that role playing context and gives you a little bit more detail about how we think the pair programming feature comes out in the lesson.